In this training, we will teach you how to use the Mozenda Agent Builder to create input and data lists, and use the available settings for each list type. We'll cover two types of objects on a website that require user input. The drop-down menu, which provides predefined items I may choose from, and the text box, which allows the user to enter text. I've partially built my agent and have come to a drop-down menu I want to capture data from. To do this, I need to create a set user input action, which is the foundation of all input and data lists. To create a single set user input action, I'll click on the drop-down menu on the web page. Then, I'll choose the option I'd like the agent to select, and click OK. The builder will now select that option every time it runs. To get the agent to cycle through each item in the drop-down menu, we need to create an input list. To do this, first, click on the drop-down menu in the web page. Second, choose the Create a List of Items button. Third, specify which options the builder is to iterate through. I want the builder to click through each item in the drop-down except the All Types option, so I'll choose Include All Items except the first item. If all types or some similar option is not present, I would choose include all items in the list. If I want only specific items from the list, I can specify those items by choosing include only the following items, and then I would select the specific options from the list, and click OK. The agent will now cycle through each option in the drop-down menu in turn. A list of inputs made with data provided by the user is called a data list. To demonstrate how to use a data list within a text box, I'll first click on the text box on the web page. Then I'll choose Create a list of inputs. I notice three options. 1. Import a file. This allows me to use data from a spreadsheet on my computer. 2. Use a collection. This allows me to use data from a collection on my account. And three, manually enter inputs. This allows me to manually type data into the builder. Let's say I want this agent to enter data from a file on my computer. I'll choose Import a File. After locating the file, I can indicate whether or not the file contains field headers here. After selecting my file, I will upload the file to my account as an independent collection. This means it becomes a collection that is not directly populated by any agent. In this example, I'm searching for businesses from specific categories and locations, so I'm going to use a spreadsheet with both categories and locations predefined. After uploading, I need to choose the field from the file that the agent will use in the search. Remember, we're currently creating an input action for the what search box. This will determine the field we use. In the file I'm using, there are two fields, category and city. I'll use category in the what search box and city in the where search box. Because I'm currently creating the input action for the what search box, I know I want to choose the category field. I notice that the field I've chosen is now specified in the set user input action I've created, as shown in the action list on page 1. Let's go back to our item list options. If I want to populate a text box using data from a collection in my account, I'll choose Use a Collection when creating my data list. A menu will appear that shows views from each collection. Choose the desired view. Choose which data from the collection you want entered into the text box, and click OK. We've now built a data list and have our first set user input. Some websites provide more than one text box to search. In this case, we see two. I want my agent to enter data into both the category and location fields at the same time. To do this, I'll click on the second text box. The list type menu will appear, and I notice there is now a fourth option. 
Use Existing Data List. I'll choose this option because the data I want to use is just another field in the collection I've already designated. The menu will show me fields from the collection. I'll choose one and click OK. I'll create a click action on the search icon to run the search using the text I've entered from my collection. Now that I've set my inputs and created the appropriate capture actions, I'll test my agent. First, the agent inserts the inputs from my collection into the search box. Then it proceeds to search and then collect the resulting data. It returns to the text boxes and enters the next set of input data, and so forth, essentially looping through the process until the agent has gone through all the data in the data list's collection. Let's say that I need to change the view in the collection that this agent is using because I want to change the information that it's searching. To do this, I double-click on the Begin Data List action and choose Select next to the View ID. A menu will appear with the list of collection views available on my account. I can choose another view from the same collection or a view from a different collection. I'll choose the one I want and click OK. In additional settings, I can control how many of the items in my collection I want to use in the text box. For example, Let's say I only want my agent to search yellow pages using the first 100 rows from the search term collection I've created. I'll place my cursor into the text box beneath Only Include Items at the following indexes and type 1-100. Now let's say I'd also like my agent to record the Category field into the output collection. First, I'll type Category into the text box beneath Capture These Fields into the Output Collection. If I want to type any other fields into this box, I'll separate them with a comma. Once I'm finished, I'll click Save. If I only need to search a few items, or those items never change, I can manually enter them rather than using a file or collection. I'll choose Manually Enter Inputs. Type each input you would like to search placed on a separate line or paragraph, and choose OK. To change these items, double-click on the Begin Item List action, and enter the new data into the Inputs box, located here. In additional settings, you can revert the agent to a single static input, and modify the way this action reacts to an error. To finish, click Save. This concludes the training on how to use a set user input action to create a list of inputs in a drop-down menu and a text box, including the settings available for each list type.